is a game of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Welcome, 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 folks, to another Coral Blade Grotto broadcast. Or to put it in a fiction term, a reaction video. And this is a reaction to someone named Alex. Which you see his face right here with his eyes closed. This was published on the Richard Vobes channel. And this video was brought to my attention by... A great friend and one of my top students, colon Harry hyphen Charles colon Ruxlow. Full stop. Now I can't say enough nice things about Harry because Harry is the type of guy that I love to contract with. All right. Not only is he open minded, not only is his cup empty, not only does he uh, perform humility, not only does he do the three principles that I teach, as I call the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, psychology principles, the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, maintenance of rule one, rule equal. The guy can also take care of himself in any type of situation, can handle himself, and he's kind. He's all the things that I look for in someone that I like to associate with. So that that's... I can't glaze the guy enough. Harry is awesome. So all you folks over there in whatever you want to call it, England, Britain, whatever, he's the man over there if you want to see him. You know, I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this. If you need help with anything, he's the guy. Now, I'm not, I didn't ask him if I could provide his contact info, so I'm not going to, comp I'm not going to provide it. Uh, but you, you, you'd be able to find him if you're, if you're, uh, savvy enough anyways he brought my attention to this video and richard vobes is someone that uh, i do watch from time to time because harry introduced me to to richard's channel however harry just shared with me some data that is a little bit interesting in that in this particular video where this man right here whose name is alex I guess it's one of those, I'm just guessing, okay, folks? I'm guessing. I'm guessing that Alex is one of these common law folks that just wants to go by the name Alex. Maybe when they write their name, they say colon man, comma, space, Alex, period, or something like that, in all lowercase. You know, folks that like to do stuff like that. Maybe he's one of those. But anyways, Harry, who again, I mentioned is my good friend and, and one of my top students, commented in the comments field but his comment was deleted and this is richard vobes's channel so that means that richard vobes or someone acting with the authority of richard vobes deleted harry's comment and just to paraphrase to sum up in harry's comment harry said it appears you know something like it appears as though alex does not understand or have full closure on what the full colon does or what it means it has no knowledge of correct sentence structure i.e quantum grammar if you would like to study correct sentence structure or to gain more knowledge of it and then he gave my channel www.youtube.com forward slash jason matthew glass and his comment was deleted by richard vobes or someone acting on richard vobes's authority so that's very interesting but what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what this Alex says about 
Well, basically, he's talking about a foreign vessel in dry dock, and then he's talking about quantum grammar. And it's very brief. So let's check it out. But I'll get to that in the second half. Let's talk about the affidavit first. Right. Now, there are people who will go into a court and they say, I am the living man. I am that. And they wonder why they don't get anywhere. Well, as I said, the living man is not recognized in their court and can't be heard. All right. Now, if you're listening to him and can't be heard and blah, 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 you're probably, if you're a student of quantum grammar, watch Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller videos and so on and so forth. You've heard that before. Can't be seen, can't be heard. And the reason that David gives is because you're on another plane. There are planes within the court. The only one that counts as far as correct sentence structure goes is the well of the court, the geometric level playing field of which the 1 by 1.9 Title IV flag takes jurisdiction over if you know how to do that. The grammar flag. All the other folks are on different planes. You got people outside the box that are in the pews in the back. You got the jury who are on different planes. You got the clerk that's on another plane, the stenographer that's on another plane, and the judge, which is on the third Master Mason plane. Some would call it that. So theoretically, you can't be heard. Of course, you can hear what's going on there, but theoretically, by their fiction rules, this is how it works. So that's what he's referring to. But what I'd like to zero in on here, folks, is affidavit. So many of these common law folks are so bent out of shape about affidavit. They get their pants in a twist about the affidavit. Well, guess what? Affidavit is a no contract word. When you really, really look at the grammar, if grammar and communication is so important, if the words you use are so important, how far are you willing to go with this? Because if you're willing to play the tape the whole way through, if you're willing to put the 33 RPM record on the record player, play it all the way through, both sides. Figure it out. Because affidavit means no contract. And I'm going to show you that right now. Although, caveat, I've already done a video many years ago giving closure to this. But I'll give it to you in brief right here, right now. My gift to you. So you see here, affidavit, written declaration upon an oath. That is what the surface, on the surface, what it's taken to mean if you're using plain, simple English, i.e. adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. However, let's look at the particles, i.e. in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. This is what we would call parse. Because there are three parts to correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Correct sentence structure, communication, which is the mathematical interface. Parse, which is what we're talking about now. And syntax, which is something we won't talk about right now. And then grammar, of course, which takes jurisdiction over everything because authority comes at the end. So let's take the particles. Affidavit. So you have an A and an F. An A is a vowel f is a consonant so i'm not i'm not going to go any deeper into that i have videos about that one of them you can look up is uh for the closure and clarity of the two syntax of the two specific syntax scenarios parts one and two let's see it comes from latin ad see ad what does ad mean to toward from proto-indo-european root Add to near at. What does Colin David hyphen Win Colin Miller say in the context of this scenario? One zero zeros out an entire multiplication problem. No matter how no matter how many factors you have, if you have a zero in there, it's done. So you have two and near. You have two toward. So add is not the thing. It's near the thing, but it's not the thing. To the thing, to is future tense. So it's in the future. Anything that neg negates what's going on right now, i.e. the now space, or as I call it, the continuum, anything that negates that or is separate from that or outside of that or different from that 
or moving towards that, if it's not that, it's no contract. Pure and simple. So the vowel in front of a consonant and affidative, it means no. So let's go back and see what the other part means. Comes from Proto-Indo-European root B-H-E-I-D-H hyphen, which means trust, confide, persuade. So an affidavit literally means not to trust, not to confide, not to persuade. It's a negative condition of state. It's a particle of negation. Again, if you're going to use language, if you're going to use Black's Law, Chicago Styles Manual, whatever you're going to use, but you're not willing to go to the full depths of what you're doing, then you're a charlatan. Then you're trying to sell somebody something. That's my humble perception, i.e. personal guess, all right? So if you're not willing to go to these lengths to use correct grammar, to really get to the root of things, then uh, how do the kids say it these days? You fake as hell. So what you have to do in, you have to do when you go into a court is you have to establish your standing as the executor of the capital lettered name. He just said you have to go into court and establish yourself as the executor of the all capital name. So this leads me to guess that this individual, Alex, perhaps does not have closure on how contract works. Because, first of all, executor is a no contract word. Anybody out there, even if you don't have knowledge of correct sentence structure, you know that EX means no. Right? No cuter. How? Oh, why not? Let's look that up. Person appointed to see that a will is carried into effect. All right. So you need someone else to carry out your will. I don't know about you, but I'm perfectly capable of carrying out my will. But anyways, let's go deeper into it. It says see execution. So you got to follow the continuance of the evidence. I know, folks, this is a lot of work. It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But it's all worth it in the end if you want to get closure on correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar. So now we got to go back to execute. Here we are. X means out from, upwards, deprive of, without, former, i.e., ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend. All right. So we know that means no. That's pretty easy, right? What's the rest of it mean? Proto-Indo-European root, S-E-K-W, which means to follow. So an executor basically means it's a contract with not following. You're not following the contract. That's what an executor is. That's why so many people get screwed over when loved ones pass away. That's why there's always so much chaos usually involved with that, along with, you know, that. But there you go. The judge, the magistrate, whoever cannot be the executor. So what he's talking about here, I personally don't, I don't have a dog in that race to use a, barbaric term or analogy I, I don't have anything to do with that because that's fiction talk that's using fiction against fiction and for those of you out there who use that and are successful with it my hat's off to you I, I personally don't care about that because if you're talking about the all caps name then you're probably talking about something connected to what's called a birth certificate I don't care if you call it a birth certificate certificate of birth certificate of live birth whatever you want to call it that contract connected to an all caps name, whether you want to think about it or not, has nothing to do with you as a live creature that draws breath because you had nothing to do with that contract. Your connection to that contract is based upon assumption presumption. Think about it. 
anything that's connected to that contract has nothing to do with you because you, of your own volition anyways, did not autograph the contract. You didn't agree to it. You're not enjoined her with it. You didn't thumbprint it with your own volition. Someone may have taken your foot and forced you to put your foot on there, but you didn't know that was happening. They may have put your handprint on there, but you didn't know that was happening. That was done by usually your guardian, your mother, your parents, your steward, whoever it was, and the hospital executive, whoever those people were. They made that contract without your knowledge, so it has nothing to do with you. Yet, throughout life, we are taught to believe that we are somehow connected to that name. And that's the beauty of quantum grammar, of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Because once you learn the grammar, then you can create what is called a colon live hyphen life hyphen claim, period. Or for the claim of the live life, period. Whatever you want to call it. The volition is the same. You create a punctuated name. We'll call it a punctuated name. Using a mathematical interface on grammar to position our facts with correctness and a continuance of the evidence, copywriting the names, the authority of those punctuated names, which would be an upper and lower case to us. We take authority over it. It has nothing to do with the birth certificate or anything of that ilk. So what he's talking about here, coming in and taking, you know, being the executor of the all caps name, did he create his all caps name, Alex? Is he the one that made that on his birth certificate? Did he authorize the birth certificate? Which means, if you say you authorize something, it means you are the author of it. Look at the word authorize. Has the word author in it. Look at the word authority. Has the word author in it. It all comes down to you being the creator of something. The author of something. You authorize it. Did you do that with that all caps name? Did you do that with that birth certificate? Probably not. Neither did the judge. Probably not. But this is all, again, I'm trying, what I'm trying to, you know, long-windedly to convey to you folks is that this is all fiction babble predicated upon assumption, presumption of this, that, or the third. Even though he's trying to help people to perhaps, I mean, I feel like he's trying to help people uh, combat the fiction system, taking advantage of them and raping them bureaucratically, He's still using their tactics and their terminology. He's use, trying to use what the fiction created against the fiction. Quantum grammar, correct sentence structure, communication, parsley syntax grammar, brought to the public in 1988 by the late colon David Ivan colon Miller. It's completely different. And I bet you dollars to donuts, neither of these gentlemen have a clue as to how that works. So, because that's the position they play, because the office is open, there's no one in it, they step in the office, they do all of these things. But once you create the office, they can't. Right. This is where the, we'll get to this second half of... Office. Again, folks, are you seeing a pattern here? Office is no contract. It follows the rule of a vowel in front of a consonant means no contract. So office means not to set or put. And again, for closure on what a vowel in front of a consonant, why that's no contract, you can look up those two videos I mentioned earlier. Why that's important. The difference is with the affidavit is you have to make sure you write it properly. And there's lots of people who write things in quantum grammar and all of this technical jargon. And people say to me, but shouldn't we write it like with a, a colon before our name and all of that? And I said, well, when you were born, did your mother go, I'm going to name you colon John? As Harry pointed out, this individual has no closure on what a colon means. Well, whether they do or they don't, we don't know for sure, but what they're conveying here is a continuance of the evidence that they don't know what a colon is. Because, first of all, when you were born, <clears throat> did you have anything to do with your name? No. So your mother gave you your name, right? Right. Okay. When you decide 
to take authority over yourself and become autonomous if that point ever occurs and you decide to learn correct sentence structure and you want to have a claim of the live life, as I said before, you would copyright copy claim a punctuated name using the mathematical interface on grammar. The colon represents a positional lodial phrase. So for example, my name. I will give you an example right here, right now. In correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, there are 10 parts of speech. Zero is conjunction, one is adverb, two is verb, three is adjective, four is pronoun, five is positional, six is lodial, seven is fact, eight is past tense, nine is future tense. So we're going to look at the positionals here. Positionals are given the numerical value of five. There are four positionals, four by with an of. The reason I have them written this way is because in correct sentence structure, one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one congruency, one function, so on and so forth. So for functions as the cause of a sentence. Of functions as the concern of a sentence. With functions as the possessive of a sentence. And by functions as the authority of the sentence. There is always one cause of the sentence, one for, and that comes at the beginning, and then there's always one by, and that comes at the end, always. Now, this is a whole entirely other concatenation sequencing that goes with it I won't go into here. For the purposes of what we're talking about here, I'm going to be talking about the name. So here is my name as it was written on my birth certificate. All right. As it stands, these are three what we would call tangible contract words, which would mean Jason is an adjective, coloring Matthew into an adjective, coloring glass into a pronoun. So what we would call an adjective, adjective, pronoun name. Adjectives are given the numerical value of three in correct sentence structure, and pronouns are given the numerical value of four. So I need to position those as facts using the mathematical interface, i.e. using a position lodial phrase. As I just said, we have positionals here. Positionals determine the function of the fact in the context of the sentence. So Jason Matthew Glass is a name. It's not technically a sentence because there's no verb in it. But that's okay. We can use titles and names in correct sentence structure without a verb as long as there are only two position lodial fact phrases. So to write it out in full, it would look like this. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. Okay. Four is the positional. Given the numerical value of five. The is a lodial. Given the numerical value of six. Now lodials tell which fact it is. Is it my fact, your fact, this fact, the fact, each fact, her fact, so on and so forth. That's what a lodial does. And then here's a fact. Jason hyphen Matthew, that's a compound fact, which means two facts come together. Facts are given the numerical value of seven in correct sentence structure. So Jason is a seven coming together with Matthew as a seven. It's because they're connected by a hyphen. Now Jason hyphen Matthew becomes one fact in and of itself. So this would be syntax as five, six, seven. And then of is the concern, i.e. consequence, of the phrase. So of is a positional, it's five, the is the lodial, six, and then glass is the fact, seven. So in what I and my tutor colon raven hyphen farhide hyphen tohiti colon in came up with, uh, for closure to colons, colons represent position lodial fact phrases. The spacing is very important. So in this context, this colon represents for the, because you can see here, I put for the Jason hyphen Matthew. This means for the Jason hyphen Matthew. Now we have to have of the. This colon represents of the. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. So this colon would be represent a five, six. Jason hyphen Matthew would be a seven. This colon represents a five, six. 
And then this glass would be a seven. So that's how a colon is used. It's used to position something. So it's not floating out there ready to be modified. Because if I don't put this here, for example, let me give you a real quick example. If I would just put Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass, and I would not, and I do not put a colon in front of Jason hyphen Matthew, and again, folks, please pay attention, it would look like this. It would not look like this. There would be no space between the colon and the J. There must be no space there in order for that to mean for the. Because if you put it into a sentence with a verb, when you flip it around and read it backwards, that for the has to then transpose to by the. And the spacing credentials that. So anyways, if I don't put that colon there and I don't put for the and I just have Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass, what happens? Jason hyphen Matthew becomes a pronoun So what happens if I don't position Jason hyphen Matthew? If I don't put a colon there with no space and I don't put a for the? Well, Jason hyphen Matthew becomes a tangible contract adjective, which is coloring of into a non-tangible contract pronoun. And nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. And then glass becomes a dangling participle verb. So that's fiction babble, and that's exactly what Alex is talking about, because he has no closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I, I, I hope he watches this video. Exactly. Oh, yes. She just named you John. So don't get caught up in the quantum grammar, which is an invention of another man. It's not real. It's an invention. It's a creation he just said quantum grammar is an invention it's a creation it's not real so is this man actually saying that anything that's invented or created is not real folks where in the living f does alex think language came from did he does he think it just appeared out of nowhere did it hatch like a reptile he doesn't think a man created language? I'm just following his logic here. I'm not even putting it in the context of correct sentence structure or quantum grammar. Because a man invented it, it's not real. That's some hilarious shit. And that tells me where that guy's psychology, his mentality is with relation to this. He knows nothing about quantum grammar. And so he's trying to dismiss it and even be derisive of it, saying it's not real. So the adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, the language, going back to Proto-Indo-European, -Europe, was not created by man? What, what, did some mythical entity just suddenly bestow all this stuff upon us? Or did a man create it? Or men? So by his logic... If a man creates something, invents something, it's not real. RE being no contract and AL. RE being no and AL meaning contract. Look it up, folks. Real has two syllables. And there's a reason for that because RE is a particle of negation. But anyways, so to address what he's saying about Colin David Ivan Wayne, Colin Miller, who he's referring to, David published the grammar. Personally, I don't know if David created it, invented it, or if it's something that he found and shared with us. He does say that he broke the mathematical interface on grammar. I'm not here to argue any of that stuff. What I'm here to claim is that it works, if you know it. My main purpose in doing this video is I was open-minded about Richard Vobes, but since he deleted my friend's comment and he's sort of chummy with this Alex fellow who only uses the word Alex, which there are so many Alexes in the world, I wonder which one he is. I mean, people have come to me and said, hey, 
Jason, wouldn't you like to go on the Richard Vobes show? And I'd be like, well, yeah, kind of open to it. But he has to approach me first. I'm not going to go and ask him. I mean, why would I do that? That's goofy. I don't want anything from him. And after seeing this video, I'm good on Richard Vobes. And I'm sure he's good on quantum grammar. I mean, what you don't know, you don't know, really. Um, it's a completely different mindset that perhaps these two gentlemen do not possess the neurological pathways to cognize or begin to cognize. Maybe they're not even open enough. Alex is certainly appears not to be open enough. His cup is already full. He already knows everything, bro. He doesn't need the goofy-ass quantum grammar. <laughs> complicated grammar stuff as if some people don't go to school to set for seven plus years to learn legalese thanks for watching folks